We're the Bull Shark team. I'm Mark McCullough. I'm Zoe Nichols. I'm Taylor Herrick. Uh, I'm Muhammad Duwell. I'm Emily Bott. I'm Sammy Byrne. And I'm Noah Wagner. And we studied the habitat use and migratory behavior of the Bull Shark, Carcarinus lucas, in the subtropical Western Atlantic. So, shark populations have been on the decline since the 1950s. This is mostly due to anthropogenic or human based impacts. Some of these impacts include finning, where sharks are caught to the meat in their fins, which is then sold and exported to countries in Asia, and other impacts like incidental bycatch, where, shark, where fishermen go out trying to catch tuna or marlin, but they set, and they set out these long lines. But because of the generality of the hook, they end up catching sharks instead. These declines can be shown in the graph to the left, with the y-axis showing relative abundance and the x-axis showing use, from a study done by Worm et al. In the graph, eight different shark species have shown decline. More specifically, in slots A, C, and H, the hammerhead shark, tiger shark, and oceanic white tip sharks have all shown exponential decline and can all be found here in the Bahamas. So why is this so important? Why do we care that, both, that shark populations are declining? We care because sharks can be apex predators and they are a keystone species. This mean, if they're apex predators, this means that they can regulate top-down control which is when they keep the ecosystem healthy by eating all the sick and old fish while maintaining the populations of secondary consumers like groupers. Since all sharks are a keystone species, this means they are vital to a marine ecosystem. So large apex predatory sharks are often highly migratory animals, and this means they have a large core habitat range. So they're swimming in and out of a lot of places, and they have a lot of places where they're exerting their top-down control. This makes MPAs, marine protected areas, areas that can totally protect or limit the amount of sharks that can be caught, often ineffective because sharks are really quickly swimming in and out of these places. In a recent study from a table shown to the right by Graham et al., the bull shark, tiger shark, and hammerhead shark were all caught and tagged from the northern Bahamas to the southern tip of Florida. And as you can see in the bottom figure, very small percentage of these sharks were swam in waters where they were totally protected. So there are two types of tags used to track sharks. One is the pop-up satellite archival tag, also known as PSAT. This tag tracks ambient light levels, depth, and temperature of where the shark is located. After its deployment duration of about 14 days to a year, the tag will pop off, transmitting data to a satellite. The second tag used is the acoustic tag. The acoustic tag is associated with acoustic receivers set up along coastlines. As the shark passes one of these receivers, it sends a ping to it, letting us know the shark is in the area. So the acoustic tag is used more for fine scale, and these tags last up to 10 years. So in 2011, the Bahamas became a shark sanctuary. So it's illegal to catch sharks or import and export them from the Bahamas. Sharks are so important to the Bahamas because of ecotourism, bringing in $140 million annually. In addition to this, sharks, as Mark previously st stated, marks as Mark previously stated, sharks are a keystone species and regulate top-down control. Specifically for our study, we focused on the bull shark. The bull shark is a large migratory fish growing up to about nine feet in length, length and can be found in all ocean basins, but currently we're lacking data in the subtropical western Atlantic. Bull sharks osmoregulate, which means that they can tolerate a wide range of salinities. They can be found in river mouths and estuaries, and in coastal waters. This makes them more susceptible to overfishing because there's a larger area where they can be fished. Bull sharks also have slow population turnover rates. This means that they're being fished faster than they can reproduce. In 2009, the bull shark was placed on the near threatened red list by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, highlighting a critical need to protect the bull shark and its habitats. The main objectives of our study on the fine scale is to look at the movements of bull sharks in South Luthor using acoustic tags, and on the broad scale using PSAT tags to measure their migratory behaviors in the Bahamas Shark Sanctuary. The Bahamas is a diverse mosaic of interconnected ecosystems including coral reefs, seagrass beds, and open ocean that sharks can travel through and influence. Um, we will be doing our study in South Luthor, which has a known and transient subpopulation of bull sharks. Who will specifically be tagging our sharks in the Cape Luther Marina where they're most commonly spotted? In order to catch the sharks in the first place, we set up drum lines and hand lines. 
A drum line consists of two buoys, which are about two meters apart. A cinder block, which is about five meters away from the buoy. And on the other side is a meter and a half ganjin. A ganjin is comprised of a, J, a circle hook painted with bonito tuna. A hairline has a drag buoy connected to an eight meter ground line connected to a ganjin, which has a J hook painted with wahoo or mahi. After we've secured the shark next to the boat, we take morphometrics. We measure the pre collar length, fork length, and total length. We, <coughs> we, sir, we imp implant the piece that tag through the dorsal fin in, with the bridle loop and secure, secure it with the metal crimp. We then flip the shark into tonic immobility, which is a natural state of paralysis and surgically implant an acoustic tag in the peritoneal cavity, which is in between the anal and dorsal areas. Unfortunately, we were unable to catch any bull sharks this semester, so we are using data collected from five, five bull sharks tagged between the years of 2013 and 2015. As you can see here, three of these five, shark, three of these five bull sharks were tagged acoustically, and three were tagged using PSAT. All tagging was done in the Cape Eleuthera Marina. It is important to note that all five of these bull sharks were sexually mature females. As you can see in figure one, nine acoustic receivers were set up around South Eleuthera, each represented by a yellow circle. The size of each yellow circle responds to the total detections for each specific receiver, to the percentage of total detections for each, each specific receiver location. We found that 90% of the data came from three locations, each of which were in the marina. We then decided to look at the hourly detections of bull sharks in the marina, as seen in figure two. We found that bull sharks are most commonly in the marina between the hours of 3 and 7 p.m., which is interesting because this corresponds to the time that fishermen are most commonly in the marina cleaning their fish. Because 90% of our data came from three locations, it is still unknown where bull sharks are swimming outside of the hours they spend in the marina. On a broad scale, we use PSATs to measure the position, depth, and temperature of three bull sharks and the waters they inhabited. To my right are three tracks illustrating the migration patterns of bull sharks in the subtropical western Atlantic. So as you can see in the first track, the bull shark, sorry, the bull shark migrated from the Bahamas north northwest to the southeastern coast of Florida, south to the northern coast of Cuba, then back north to the southwestern tip of Florida before migrating through a river there, and north along the eastern coast of Florida, ending up along the coast of Jacksonville. The second bull shark spent the majority of its time in Bahamian waters before migrating north-northwest to the eastern coast of Florida, and the third shark interestingly migrated south to the northern coast of Cuba first, westward along that northern coast before migrating northward through the Florida Straits and ending up off the southwestern coast of Florida. So overall, all three bull sharks left Bahamian coastal waters and had a net migration north towards Florida. Next, we examined the depth and temperature of the water inhabited by bull sharks. Figures two and three show the mean temperature and mean depth of the water uh, by season. So we used a uh, Kruskal Wallace test to determine if there's a statistically significant difference between the temperature and depth by, for each season, and we found there was, in fact, a statistically significant difference for each season for both temperature and depth. Next, we used a post hoc test to determine where those differences lay. As you can see, the summer and fall have much higher temperatures than the winter and spring, and the summer and fall have much higher depths than in the winter and spring. However, since the range for both temperature and depth is not very high, ranging from only about 25.5 degrees Celsius to 28.5 degrees Celsius and 3 to 12 meters. The data change is not very significant over seasons. Some conclusions we can draw from our results. On a more fine scale, um, bull sharks frequent the Cape Luther Marina between the hours of 3 to 7 p.m which corresponds with the hours that fishermen are commonly seen in the marina and clean their fish. It's interesting to note that bull sharks have been detected in the marina between these hours, even on days when fishermen are not in the marina, showing that sharks have learned this behavior. Over Unfortunately, 
all of our detection for between the hours of 3 to 7 p.m., so we still don't know where sharks are going outside of that time range. If we could expand our sample size, we could more accurately validate our results. On a more broad scale, all three bull sharks had a net migration northward towards Florida. We believe this migration is due to a search for a place to reproduce. All three uh, focused sharks, track sharks, were sexually mature females, but none of the three displayed visible mating scars while here in Eleuthera. This suggests that reproduction happens elsewhere, possibly in Florida. All three track sharks left the Bahamian EEZ and Bahamian Shark Sanctuary, leaving them totally unprotected for part of the year. Moving forward, we suggest more uh, international cooperation to protect these sharks throughout their lifespan and migration. Thank you. We'd like to acknowledge the DeVos family, Dr. Ed Brooks, Annabelle Brooks, Nicole Firing, Kenny Ludowitz, Rob Hallinan, and Lance, Lucy Howie and Dr. Lance Jordan for microwave telemetry. Here's our literature cited. Any questions? Yes. Why is it do you think that your sample size was so small for this? So we believe that our sample size is so small because we already have a relatively small subpopulation of bull sharks here in South Luther. There's a known seven amount of bull sharks. So really tagging fire with seven was actually a very relatively high sample size for the subpopulation. In later research, we hope to expand our, um, our kind of range of where we're catching bull sharks so we can um, increase the sample size. Yes. Does the season that you're in right now and the fact that this is spring affect how many bull sharks you guys were catching and successfully able to tag? And so the question was, does the season affect how many bull sharks you've caught this semester? And yes, that has definitely affected our results because bull sharks migrate out of the Bahamas during this time. Uh, so by the time we hit April, we were not uh, finding any bull sharks in the marina. Uh, and they're highly elusive to begin with. So um, after mid-spring, it is very difficult to catch them. Um, why do you suppose um, there is little information that we have right now on, on sexually mature males and male juveniles? And if so, how would you propose we try and get that information? Um, the question was, why do we think that there's so little information on males and sexually mature males? Um, this could possibly due to the fact that males are somewhat harder to catch than females because the females are often larger and need to eat more because they need to eat while they're pregnant to reproduce. So bull, male bull sharks are not as likely to take our hooks because they don't need as much food as the females do. Future research could look into this somehow to just try and focus on males.